forget to wish your mothers happy Mother's Day. They do a lot for you. Like, a lot. So don't forget. Alright, you guys want to come and worship and stand?
everybody who came to listen to the sermon. Just thank you. Thank you. 
going on there. I was like, hands down. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Maddie. Was that better than my first time? I'm yes. sorry. Okay. I'll, I'll, I will actually practice that on a softer surface because my left leg right now, right here, is, is feeling it. All right, so here's the deal. Um, I bet if, if Maddie could have done the cartwheel, if she was, you know, had, had on other stuff, and she could have done the cartwheel, and she would have, like, killed it, right? Yes. Chances are I'd be sitting here in the corner and be like, yeah, I'm not going to follow up after that. Like, Maddie is so good at that cartwheel. Who am I to do it when she's that good? In other words, my weakness would have prevented me from doing something that Maddie is very, very strong in. Okay, so cartwheeling might be one of Maddie's strength, and cartwheeling is one of my weaknesses. And sometimes, maybe you can relate to this because it's like the tension of, of like being limited with something. Sometimes we compare our weaknesses to somebody else's strength. So, for example, you are just naturally an introvert. Like, you, you couldn't come up here on stage and speak. You couldn't even do what Maddie just did. You're like, no, I don't want to go to the light. I'm afraid of the light. Um, or maybe it's 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 a case where when when you play a sport, like you're you might be good at the sport, but you don't want to be on the court. You don't want to be on the field, no matter how good you are, because you don't want everybody else to be be watching you. And maybe you see somebody else, maybe a friend or just somebody else in this room that is very, very good at that stuff. And they're like, yeah, I love the limelight. I'm like, yeah, I'm like a people person. And I can meet 10 people in 10 minutes and remember everything about them and we're best friends forever, yay. And you're like, not one of those people. And you compare yourself to them, but there are other things that you are very, very good at that you just completely oversee. And so today we're gonna to be talking about how we shouldn't let our weaknesses hold us back. Because those same weaknesses, me being able to do that cartly, like, that is something I can get way much better at. I know that that's something simpler for you. It might be a much bigger deal. But I want us to avoid <coughs> our fear. Because when we avoid our fear, then we can be set up to take some serious ground, especially as it relates to relationship with Jesus. So if you have your Bibles, um, turn to the book of Exodus, and we're going to learn some more about Moses and just how uh, Moses was also limited in some areas. And uh, last week we talked about how decisions that Moses made in the past didn't limit the potential, like what God could use him to do. So even though he murdered a guy and buried him and like ran away from Egypt and did all these things, God still called Moses and said, hey, Moses, you're still the guy I want to lead my people out of Egypt. And so no matter what Moses did, no matter what you did, or what you've done, no matter what you will do, God can still use you in mighty, mighty, tremendous ways. And so that's what we did last week, and now we're going to look at, at, at something here um, that Moses thought, man, I can't do this because here's a weakness. So Exodus 6, Exodus chapter 6, verse 28 to 30. You're going to realize Moses is just like you, okay? Just like you. He had weaknesses, and sometimes he let the weakness get the better of him. And most times when we hear about Moses, we hear about the, 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 the parting of the Red Sea or the Ten Plagues, and we heard about the, the burning bush or the Ten Commandments or fill in the blank, manna falling from heaven, striking the rock, like those cool stories, but we sometimes lose these little details that makes Moses very much human, very much more like you and I. So here's what it says in Exodus chapter 6, verse 28 to 30. It says, When the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, he said to him, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, everything I am telling you. So listen, this is God speaking. God is saying, I am the Lord, tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, everything I'm telling you. No, just side note, okay? In the Old Testament, God talked to the people, to his people, a lot different than he does today. Like, God would, would really, like, talk 
to his people. Like you could hear God's voice, and he'd do it in different ways. It was it was it was amazing. I I wish I was living in that time. I wonder what does God's voice sounds like. Does it sound like Morgan Freeman? Or I don't know. It'd just be cool to be spoken to by God and you hear his words. Anyways, maybe this is just me, and you're like, Andre, I'm okay. Anyway. <coughs> But this is God talking to Moses, which is a big deal. But here's what Moses does, okay? But Moses argued with the Lord, saying, I can't do it. I'm just going to stop. Like, how many of you guys didn't argue? If you heard God speaking to you, you would argue with God. Like, like, nobody. Okay, so Moses is saying, God, I can't do it. I'm such a clumsy speaker. Why should Pharaoh listen to me? So Moses right here, he's identified his weakness. I'm not a great speaker. I'm a clumsy speaker. Uh, I shouldn't go speak to Pharaoh because I'm going to fumble around my words and Pharaoh's going to be like, is he speaking another language? Is he a toddler? Like, what is going on with this guy? He can't communicate anything. I don't understand what he's saying. The Pharaoh walk wouldn't listen to him. That's what Moses thought. Then if you go to Exodus chapter 7, verse 1 to 2, then the Lord said to Moses, pay close attention to this. I will make you seem like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. Tell Aaron everything I have commanded, or everything I command you, and Aaron must command Pharaoh to let the people of Israel leave his country. See, Moses responded with doubt and anxiety because he had a speech impediment that made him feel like he wasn't up for the task. But God didn't ignore Moses' weakness. He didn't see Moses' weakness as something that would limit his potential. God still saw a tremendous potential for Moses. Instead, God brought help so that Moses go could overcome his fear and free the Israelites. I'm going to invite Olivia up here for a minute. We're not going to talk about something here because I think Olivia can can probably relate a little bit to Moses. And if you guys don't know, this is Olivia Gooding. She is a senior in high school and um, she's been an intern here at the church. She's going to be graduating next week Sunday, which is going to be great. But then a week after she graduates next week Sunday, she leaves for a country called Ecuador. She's gonna be there for a whole um, month working with um, kids that are your age and younger. <laughs> They're doing an internship at a mission called Panda Vida. So that's a little bit about Olivia, but just like you, she was in middle school and just like you guys, um, and just like Moses, there was, there was something that she struggled with um, a while back. And uh, yeah, Olivia, tell us a little bit about, about you and that, that, that part of your story. So when I was younger, I struggled with my fear of my speech impediment. Um, some people hear it today, some people don't, um, but in junior high it was a lot worse. Um, certain words I could not pronounce right, and so people would mock me, um, just make fun of it a lot. Yeah. And, and how, I mean, obviously, you, like you said, some people can hear it now, some people can't. Um, how, how has that happened? Like, how have you gone from speech impediment where you could, where you were afraid to speak because people would make fun of you and mock you, to now, if you're having this conversation with me, now, like two weeks ago, you were actually delivering the first message to open up the Limitless series. Like, you've been speaking here in Fuse, you've been doing stuff in our auditorium and other, other churches. Like, how did you get to this spot? Um, well, God used a moment on my second mission trip when I was in, uh, Indiana, and I had one of the pastors come up to me and ask if I could speak, and the first thing that came to my mind was no, like absolutely not, mm -hmm. and I just had a lot of people pouring into me telling me, you know, like, God's going to use you, you have to let him, and I remember uh, right at that moment, I just opened up my Bible, and I was just digging into his word, and I was digging into prayer, and then all of a sudden, it just seemed that it didn't matter. That fear just kind of crumbled. Mm -hmm. And so every time I had that fear, I just thought about how God uses people. And they actually told me about Moses' story and how right. Moses just, he had.
have a speech impediment that was way worse. He had a stutter that um, most people could not understand him very well. And so we all know who Moses is to this day. Like God can just use him. So. And uh, I mean, like it, it didn't happen just overnight. Like it. And then would you say right now, like that's a weakness, or would you say God is using what you thought was a weakness, what you thought you couldn't, you know, would, would prevent you from doing something good for God? Would you say He is completely open up your eyes and say, "Hey, I can actually use you." Yes, um, I've learned through this that when you give God your weakness, He makes it your strength. Mm -hmm. And so now it's something that I can relate with people and I can share with them. And God's just used it in my life to just be able to tell more people about Him. And He's used it for a bridge to open conversations up. And so definitely giving Him my weakness made it into a strength. Awesome. Hey guys, you're for Olivia. Thank you, Olivia. I just want you guys to catch from Olivia's story and from Moses' stories that despite his weakness or despite her weakness, God used both of them to do incredible things. That they weren't limited by their weaknesses one bit. And so, if you're taking notes, I want you to ask yourself this question. What weakness is standing in the way of who you want to be? What is it? What weakness is standing in the way of who you want to be? Because we all got one. I was, you know, joking around a little bit when I was doing the cartwheel. I mean, I can, I can relate to... Olivia, and I can relate a little bit to Moses. Not that I had a stutter or a speech impediment, but if you guys were to hear me speak like five years ago when I just came from Jamaica, you'd be like, get that crazy Jamaican off the stage. Nobody knows what he's talking about. Or you'd be giggling the whole time because I would say every single word. It doesn't matter how small a word it was, it would sound weird. And you wouldn't know what I was talking about, and, you, and you, I would lose you. And all I wanted, all I wanted was to be like my mentor, Andy Rector, who was speaking and, and, and teaching kids at the time, and he was great at what he was doing. Like, man, I'm so weak in this area. We'd do Crossing Kids Live, and I'd get up to speak, and they would say, Andre, you're talking way too fast. Andre, we can't understand what you're saying. You need to slow it down. You need to... I'm like, I, I want to be so much better than that. When I'm, I'm limited because I grew up for 21 years in a country that, you know, English wasn't spoken very often. Like, we spoke another language, and so I was limited, but, but, God had other plans, and I worked on it, and I, and I asked God for help, and man, I'm here today, and you can understand, hopefully, everything that I've said. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter what weakness you think you have that might be limiting you from something that you want to do, someone that you want to be. God said, hey, I can use you. I got a plan for you. Just like Moses, just like Olivia. I can use your weakness to do incredible things. And, and maybe, just maybe, because of your weakness, you'll trust me, God, even, even more. That maybe you'll be able to say, in my weakness, God, you're strong. We're going to give you all the glory because I know I, I can't do this. And that's what, what I say every single day. If I do a good job speaking, I know how, how horrible of a communicator that I am. I can't take the credit for it because I suck. So I give all the glory to God because without him, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be speaking to you or anybody else because this is not my strength. So whatever it is, whatever your weakness is, leave it at these steps. Surrender it to God. Can you guys stand and pray with me? Heavenly Father, God, we come before you. And God, I know I look around in this room and I, and I just know every single one of these students, they've, they've got something. They've got a weakness that 
they think is limiting them from who you have called them to be. So God, all I ask today, during this time, during this moment of invitation, where they get to respond to you, God, they'll identify what that weakness is, and they'll just surrender it at your feet. God, that they'll be able to see the plans, the future you have for them, and the potential that you've placed in them. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
praying for everybody who came to hear your word. And I hope that we, have a, we all have a great day. Thank you, Stephen. Like Andre said, I'm going to be great. And so lately I have been just really busy trying to get everything in order. I'm just stressing now, and I was sitting in class one day writing one of my essays, and I started thinking about all of this is for God, so why am I getting extremely stressed out? And I know school is going to be wrapping up for you guys in a couple weeks, months, weeks, okay, weeks. And um, I know that you guys have, your circles are busy for the, you guys that are in athletics um, or clubs or just hanging out with your friends. But I want you guys just to think about how much um, God has done for you and what this is all about. In Luke 9, 23, it says, Then he said to all, Whomever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. And I started realizing that I sometimes put so much stress on other things that I don't give up myself and take up his cross. So during this time of communion, I just want to challenge you guys to just take up your cross and just spend time with the Lord. Will you guys bear with me? Dear God, you are so mighty and so amazing. God, I, we just want to thank you so much for just being here, for just being invested in these kids' lives. God, I just pray as um, summer is coming, God, that you are just love on them, God, that you are just um, bless them in many ways that they do not see coming. This is all for your glory, in Jesus' name.
I'm going to ask the people with the buckets to come up. This is offering. The Bible talks about giving God 10%. Um, so this is a way we can be obedient. Um, we have a couple announcements. Um, raise your hand if you are in any grade except for eighth. Okay. Crossing camp. Crossing camp. Crossing camp. Crossing camp. Go sign up. Okay. It is going to be a blast. You guys get to go. It's, just go sign up. Okay. I'll be out by the booth. Come see me. Um, okay. Who ha does not have school on Monday? Raise your hand. Yeah, I'm mad at all of you guys because I do. But anyway, um, for you guys, we have a dodgeball tournament. What, what? Um, who likes dodgeball? Dodgeball! Who's good at it? <laughs> who just gets hit all the time but laughs? All right, all right. This kind of just kind of dead. Um, we have dodgeball tournament that day. So tell mom, hey, I need to go. Play and then we are gonna go into small groups. Whoa, 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 whoa! We came to small groups yet. We came to small groups yet. Uh, before we go into small groups, uh, Olivia's gonna be gone. This is her last Sunday with us, what? and so uh, it would it would not be just if we let her um, leave and not leave without some tears and some makeup growing. So we're going to pray for Olivia. And so what I want you guys to do is just stand up right now. And I'm going to have two people come up here who didn't know they were going to pray actually until until like when I say their names. So so Grayson, where's Grayson? Where's Grayson? Grayson here. Okay, Grayson, I'm going to have you pray. Okay, and Gracie, I'm going to have you pray. So Gracie, come over here. Gracie, Gracie. All right, and then everybody else, um, just kind of like come in a little closer and we're going to like Try to extend. You don't have to touch her. Just, just extend your hand to her. Um, or girls, I guess girls, girls, you can come in closer. Girls, you can touch Olivia. Boys, don't touch Olivia. Um, no touch rule, okay? Sorry, it's just how I roll. No purple. Uh, no purple. That's right. Good job. But anyway, so, so here's the deal, guys. Uh, Olivia has been a part of this ministry um, for, for a very long time. She's been a small group leader, and also. Kind of like my left-hand woman. Um, when it comes down to running views, she's been she's she's preached like two times a month, and she's in a really good job doing that. We're doing communion stuff, or just other leadership areas. She's been a rock star, not just in this ministry but to this church. And uh, as she gets ready to graduate from high school, she goes to Manhattan Christian College to study Christian ministry, and as she goes to Ecuador to do incredible. Uh, mission work for a whole month. We want to make sure that uh, we, we pray her up and, and send her out to do even more kingdom work that she's been already started here. So, um, you have the mic still. I'm going to give it to Gracie first and then to Gracie, and then I'll, I'll finish up. Why are you guys, everybody? Dear Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day, and we just lift up Olivia right now, Lord. We all love her so much. She has been such a blessing to everyone here in the crossing, and we just pray that um, she just has a good time and that she can just go along and have a good life and um, that she can be safe and happy with everything. And even though we're going to miss her so much here at the crossing, we just pray that she knows how much we care for her and how much we'll always be here for her no matter what, Lord. And we just thank you for blessing us with such an amazing girl. Lord, we just we thank you so much for all the time we've had with Olivia. She has been such an amazing blessing to us all. She just pours out her heart weekly and whenever she sees us, Lord, and she just, she looks you in the eye and she says, how was your week? Are you really okay? And she just, she just is your son, Lord. She just is the kind of love that I imagine that Jesus showed to everyone else. And he really, he didn't just say, how's your week? He said, how are you? And Lord, I just pray that you would never lose that youth, that you would multiply that, Lord, and that through that she would reach so many people. I pray that you would bless her, that you would be with her, that she would know that she's always loved that she would know how much she's impacted us. Thank you that we've gotten to know her, Lord, and we send her out in your name and in your glory. In 
Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, God, uh, as we are all gathered here, surrounding Olivia, uh, man, there are so many witnesses here to uh, just the incredible life that she has lived up until this point. And God, uh, it is our prayer that this is just a glimpse, that this is, it isn't even half of the awesome plans that you have prepared for her, that she goes to Kansas and goes to Manhattan Christian College, God, that you will, you will show her even so much more than she thought um, existed in, in, in her plans. God, as she goes to Ecuador, she will be able to reach and love so much more people. She, she asks the question, I didn't know I could love like this. Well, it's because of you. So God, whatever it is that she does from here on out, no matter how unknown the future might be, what some of the details might look like, God, I just pray you continue to use her. Continue to, to pour your spirit in her and just use her whatever way you can, whatever way you wish. I know her, that she has a willing heart, that she will always say yes to you, that she will always try to discern your will. And God, I pray that she'll continue to be that person and continue to lead other people in a relationship with you. God, we thank you so much for what she's accomplished and the many people that she's impacted while she's been here. I pray, God, that you continue to multiply that. Amen.